Welcome back to Bible study, to Paul's letter to the Galatian church. We're racing through Galatians, as you would expect, with our, our important Bible scholars, John Campbell, Derek Walker. And I was joking when I said we're racing through Galatians. <laughs> we're following at a measured pace, a measured pace. Okay, so John is going to read from verse uh, 16 to the end, and Derek is going to pray. Right, Galatians chapter 4, uh, starting at verse 16. Have I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? They zealously court you, but for no good. Yes, they want to exclude you, that you may be zealous for them. But it is good to be zealous in good thing always, and not only when I'm present with you. My little children, for whom I labour in birth again until Christ is formed in you, I would like to be present with you. I would like to be present with you now and to change my tone, for I have doubts about you. Tell me, you who desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondwoman, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born according to the flesh, and he of the free woman through promise, which things are symbolic. For these are the two covenants, the one from Mount Sinai, which gives birth to bondage, which is Hagar. For this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and corresponds to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. But the Jerusalem above is free, which is the mother of us all, for it is written, Rejoice, O barren, you who do not bear. Break forth and shout, you who are not in labour. For the desolate has many more children than she who has a husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are children of promise. But as he who was born according to the flesh then persecuted him who was born according to the Spirit, even so it is now. Nevertheless, what does the Scripture say? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Thank you. Thanks, Derek. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us to your word again. And, and Lord, we, we are eager to hear you speak to us. Open our eyes, open our ears, that we may understand your wonderful truth. It's not by our own strength, it's by your spirit mm. that these things become real to us and in our lives. So, Lord, we ask you, Holy Spirit, to, to make it real, to make your truth come alive in us. Help us, Lord, to understand what you're saying to us. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Mm. Amen. 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 Wow, I, I get the feeling sometimes when I'm studying the scriptures or, or, or a, the, a memory comes back to me of climbing on a rock face in North Wales. It, all, it, it was tr climbing Triven or just behind Triven in the Snowdonia. And, and suddenly, you know, it all seems I'm completely on top of it, like you're on, completely on top of the passage. And then um, it just gets steeper and steeper and you're climbing without ropes. <laughs> and you get to that point, am I ever going to get to the top of this one? Or do I, and there's no way down, as it were. <laughs> and I just sometimes feel like that in Paul's letter to the Galatians. And the good thing is I've got uh, chaps here who've got the ropes and, um, <laughs> you know, know the, way, know the way up to the top, the route. And so on, with that introduction, John, what well, are your thoughts from verse uh, well, 16, I, it is, it's, let alone chapter it, it, 4? It, the, the, the analogy, you know, with a, with a climb and scree slopes and things like that is, is a good one. But I, I've said before, since we've been studying this letter, and I'm going to say it again, I, I think this is one of the most important books. Of course it's all important. Yeah. But, you know, in human terms, if we can grade them, this book is, is one that should be on our lips. All of us should have it ingrained within our hearts because it is, it is the, the fulcrum around which truth and error rotates or swings. And it is the one that if you're not well versed in it, you will be caught out. 
there's no doubt you will be caught out because legalism is at large in the world and it is very much at large. It's at large in all religions, it's at large in Christendom and it is determined to catch you out. It is a determined enemy as we will see as Paul is, is, is spelling out in, in real terms for the real enemy, those real Judaizers who are trying to capture the Galatian, uh, the Galatian believers. And so we really need to understand this book. We, we, it's so easy, you know, I, I suggest most of us have read this stuff before and thought this passage that we've just read is, God, it's a bit, a bit tricky. Yeah. Uh, it isn't tricky when you stop and take time and, and realize that Paul is moving into allegory, which is very brave of him mm. because allegories can go wrong, but of course mm. he's, his allegory yeah. is rooted in the Holy Spirit, so this is not going to go wrong. And, and we he produces it two or three the allegories here, yeah. which all tie and knit together, which we will find out that you can trace them back through each other, which is going to be, I think, very exciting. Yeah, very good. So we're, we're sort of interpreting it through the lens, Paul's lens of Galatians. I think that's the only way to do it, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Verse 16. So, verse 16, yes. Now, he's, this is a, still in a very personal passage. Before he gets to the allegory, yeah. he has a few things to, to say about, as it were, the, these, these false teachers, these legalists that are, are trying to, as it were, take the churches of Galatia away from their loyalty to Paul. Mm. Uh, and, and away from the gospel of grace. And uh, there's an implication there in verse 16, have I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth, that in fact certain in the church, you know, that these, these uh, teachers are very much firing their guns against Paul and painting him as the enemy, mm. as someone who's given them the wrong information. And, and so he then goes on and says, they zealously caught you. So in other words, they're love bombing. Mm. These, these um, legalists, one of their methods was to make a big fuss of yeah. them and say, you know, you, um, God has awesome things for you, you know, yeah. which might seem good on the surface. They're, they're giving them a lot of attention. Yeah. They're zealously courting them. There's love bombing. Mm -hmm. But you have to be careful when that happens because that's what cults do. That's right. And uh, he says, but notice he says, but not, but for no good. In other words, their, their motives are not really love, mm. all right? Insta instead, he says, yes, they want to exclude you. Yeah. So their real motive in all this love bombing mm. is to actually exclude them from Paul, yeah. actually from the grace of God, yeah. uh, but also from anyone else, really. That's mm. what mm. cults do, is kind of say, well, you mustn't go near any other church or anything like that because it'll be spiritually damaging for yeah. you. Yeah. And so they, they want to possess the Galatians for themselves. Yeah. They, they are doing it out of selfish reasons, he's mm. saying. So don't be fooled by their love bombing, because yeah. <laughs> they're actually doing it for themselves to have you all to so themselves. So you keep mentioning love bombing, a sort of honey trap comes to mind, <laughs> that you're, they're literally trying to entrap you with, with, with honey, but we, we're here to do truth bombing. They are. Are we not, John? But you, I mean, you can yeah. see what's going on here. Yeah. Uh, in a sense, all born again believers are, are back in the garden, mm. in a sense. Yeah. And, and yet, the, the, Satan under the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is still calling out to them, come and taste, yeah. come and taste. Mm. And, and that's exactly what's going on here. They've, you know, the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is the law. The thing that they they were told not to not to have anything to do with, and it's the same argument, it's the same temptation, it's the same seduction that's going on here. Yeah, that's that's opening up another very interesting analogy, isn't it? Uh, Garden of Eden. It's one one of the questions I struggled with with my daughter when she was about four years old. Daddy, what? What's wrong with eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? And if only I had what you just said, John, I could have answered her more clearly than my my sort of faltering, well, it's, you know, you don't want just the knowledge of good and evil, you need the wisdom to know the difference. And the, 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 the tree of life brings wisdom. The principle is, is one of pride, because it seems yeah. like attractive, you know. Yeah. But the point is, if we have that knowledge of good and evil within ourselves, then mm. we become our own base of operation. Rather than depending on the life of God, Mm. And, the, and the leadership Absolutely. of God. Absolutely. Yeah. You can be we, like God. We yeah. can, that gives you the ability to be independent from God yeah. in pride 
and have the base of operation in yourself rather than in God. Yeah. And then that establishes the principle of pride mm -hmm. in your life. Mm -hmm. and, and the problem with the law, or legalism rather, is, is that it, it activates your flesh, it activates your pride, because now you are trying to establish yourself before God mm. by your own performance. Mm. And it's right. you. You are the base of operation in yeah. that, rather than amazing? depending on the grace of God. Isn't it amazing the great theological truths are rooted in yeah. Genesis, right there at the beginning, oh, yes. they're consistent yes. you know, with, with what God revealed right at the beginning. Wow. Okay, carry on. <laughs> Are we, well, um, well, in verse 18, go, go Paul through. kind of puts a balance here. Yeah. He says, it is good to be zealous in a good thing always. Mm. And I think what he's saying is, it's not so much, you know, it, it's good that you are made a fuss of. You know, um, he's not saying, you know, um, that's wrong. And, you know, Paul would say that he showed great love towards the Galatians. So he, he's not knocking that, but he's saying, but the motive must be right. Mm. And he's going to go on and talk about how his motive toward them is genuine love, mm. because he wants to make them like Christ. Mm. He, he doesn't want to, you know, own them for himself. Uh, Can I pick up, because you've used that term love bombing, and so my mind starts mm -hmm. spinning about, you know, all you need is love. Love, all, love is all you need. And, you know, the Beatles song, which is like the spirit of our age. So as long as love is in there, it doesn't really matter, you know, what's, what the rights and wrongs are. Mm. It's all down to love. And uh, that may be also, it's, it's very seductive because you think, yeah, God is love. So, um, you know, what's wrong with, you know, just covering over, as it were, yeah. the multitude of sins? Um, through love, but there's different, different um, love. There, there is actually a, a different depths and layers yes. to what love, what love is, and it's not just a sort of sentimental, superficial belonging to the club, as it were. You, I mean, the, the point that Paul is making here is that, that you know, love also, obviously, is awesome, and that's yeah, you know, yeah, of course. But there, they are putting on a pretense of love. Mm. It isn't real love. Mm. So I guess what he's saying is what that which proclaims itself to be love is, is not necessarily love. Yeah. You know, mm. in, the, in the case of these legalists, what they really want is, is they, they want this, these, in fact, he, he goes on and says, you know, he, want, he wants their, um, they, they want the devotion of the Galatians, and mm. that's why they are... Mm doing what they're doing. Mm. Whereas Paul is going to make it clear his love is a genuine love, mm. like, like a mother for her child. Yeah. Um, and, and so, yeah, the problem with love is sometimes just because somebody says I love you mm. isn't necessarily so. Because <laughs> we live in an age where everything is being redefined. We live in uh, the, the West, so-called Western Christendom has become so amorphous Love's been redefined, peace has been redefined, truth has been redefined, sin has been redefined. It's like everything is, mm. is being, uh, for those who are zealous, you know, for their cause, they are able to completely, you know, they can yes, call it, evil good. Well, they can. And, and, and it's interesting because as the church has lost its discernment, and it has, yes. I, I doubt about that, I'm not talking about, let's say, the last 20 years, I'm talking about the last 200 years. Yeah. As the church has lost its discernment, so it's been able to be infiltrated, and it has been, mm. and, and, and therefore you couldn't criticise the infiltrators, mm. and talk about those, the clergy as well as, as, well as the congregants, mm. um, you couldn't criticise them because that would not be showing love. Mm. And by manipulating love, they have cemented themselves into positions of power, mm. and they now run things. Yeah. It's as yeah, simple it as that. It is amazing how institutions can be captured. Yes, captured that, that's what's by, by this, uh, this whole love argument, yeah. which, is, uh, which is a fallacious yeah. argument. Yes, okay. Let's give Derek a, a half a minute to think about what next to say. Oh. No, it's just, it is an interesting thing, is what, what is love? Mm. You know, and I think it's one John 4 talks about, you know, that yes. love is of God. Mm. God is love, mm. and love is of God. So all true, all true love is of God. Mm. And I was thinking, you know, what is love? And uh, the world probably would say, oh, it's a feeling. 
you know, yeah. it's a feeling. Um, and we, as Christians, often will say, no, it's more than a feeling, it's, it's of something in the will, it's a commitment. Yeah. It's a decision. But I don't think even that is quite right, mm -hmm. because I would say that that is the manifestation in the soul of love. But love, if God is love, love is ultimately spiritual. Mm. Love is the presence of God in us, or you could say the grace of God in us. Yeah. In other words, love is a reality, it's, it's God in us, and without God there, there are things that might look like love, but it says love is of God, and if anyone loves, mm. they are born of God and they know God. Mm. In other words, we are, it's only through knowing God and being in fellowship with God, being connected with God, that l that, that real love can be manifested. Mm. And when it is, it will cause us to feel, yes, and it will cause us to, to make a commitment for the good of other people. But the source of it is, is God. Mm. And that's why legalism fails, because legalism is man's attempt to impersonate love to try and do what the loving things would do. You know, um, it, you know, if you love God, then you would keep all these laws. But you are actually not, you're trying to do it out of your flesh, and your flesh cannot produce the genuine article. Yeah. So, you, so we can only learn to love by knowing God, being born again, knowing God, and allowing His love, the fruit of the Spirit is love. Then we are operating in the genuine and then we'll genuinely fulfill God's yeah. requirements. Yeah. That's so important. Mm. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, it says. And, yeah. and, and I, so it's I've, not sensual, it's spiritual. It's absolutely that's, that's not really sensual, really it's spiritual, that's right. And, and it's our, our yielding to God in us which will allow that love to flow. You know, you know, you've got to learn, you've got to practice it, you've got to, there's no shortcuts to these things. I mean, the Lord can totally take over, um, and He may, or He may not, but it's there, and as we yield to it and say, Lord, let that love flow through me to others, which is exactly what He wants to do. Mm. It I, will, I, I, but I, you can't manufacture it. Exactly. And we, we, we get this small glimpse of it, this agape love, or agave, how it's yeah. pronounced, this totally selfless love. Mm. We, we get a glimpse of it and how we feel towards our children and our spouses. Mm. But it's imperfect, we know it is, because we don't always feel that way towards them. But God always feels that way towards us, even when we do the most unspeakable things yeah. towards us who are His. Yeah. Yeah, that, that the scripture that says God's word is living sharper than any two-edged sword, you know, able to divide between what is sort of soulish or sensual and what is spiritual could apply to us understanding love in the same way as us understanding grace or, yeah, yeah. or the law. But yeah, God's word can divide. And sometimes it's very close. So, you know, true love rather uh, as opposed to a, a kind of, less than true love. You need God's word to actually say what, what is true, what, what is of God, mm. and what is something that is sort of manipulating your senses. Because we're all susceptible to, um, as it were, the prince of the power of the air manipulating the sen sensual world, our senses, and um, you know, sight, and yeah, hearing, so. you know, and pride, mm. you know, where, where, it's, where, he, where he, that's his domain. So if we take uh, the spirit out of our lives, then we are completely at the mercy of the, the honey trap. Yeah, completely. Yeah, yeah. And we can we can easily be deceived. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the classic example is, let's say, a man who falls for for a woman. Yeah. Uh, he's married. Mm. You know, and and he says, "Well, I I I love her. It has to be right. Mm. You know, this mm. this is." This is real, mm. but actually, it is obviously not coming from God's love. Yeah. Ultimately, he's engaged in a selfish activity, an yeah. immoral activity. Yeah. But he's been deceived by this feeling, mm. you know, mm. and so and so it's he's he's it's soulish. It isn't spiritual. Yeah. But to put it the other way around, the that which, when love flow, come, is like a fountain in our spirit, and when it flows forth, it will affect our feelings. You That's know. right. And the more That's you right. yield so the other to way it, round. Yeah. Yeah, the more you yield to it, as John was saying, the more you obey, 
you know, the leading of the Spirit and the leading of, of that real love, the more that love will be established in your soul. You know, so for instance, you might start, you know, the Bible says, pray for those who despise you, persecute mm. you. You know, you obviously don't feel like praying for them, mm. but let's say you obey um, and, and you ask the Holy Spirit's help mm -hmm. and, and you start praying. After a time, actually, your, your feelings will, will change toward mm. that person because that love that's now flowing through your soul as you're yielding to it will actually change your disposition. Mm. So there, there is that way. I've got ringing in my ears, as I often do, because I found, find Keith Green had so much uh, spiritual truth in his songs. But it, in the song, um, To Obey is Better Than Sacrifice, mm. there's a line that says, your flesh is something I just can't feed. <laughs> he says, um, uh, talking about a God and, and the, the spiritual side of our, our lives. But um, can you, in the context of our study on grace, can you unpack that scripture that says to obey is better than sacrifice? So, so the sacrifice is legalistic. The obedience, I know it's later yes, on I, in our I, reading that's right. about yeah. you know, Sinai. I, uh, and ob obedience really comes to walking in the spirit. If you're walking in the Spirit... That's not legalistic. That's, that's not legalistic, point. no. You're walking with the Holy Spirit. Um, we're going to come to this actually at the end of Galatians, and it's quite interesting there. We'll cover it again, but when Paul is encouraging to, to, to walk... Let's just go there, it's mm -hmm. just at the end. Verse 6... Um, where is it? I thought I'd marked it, perhaps okay. I didn't. It doesn't... Oh no, it's at the end of verse f uh, chapter 5, yep. um, v verses 25 and 26. If we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking what... No, I beg your pardon. It's okay, we've got time. Uh, yeah, here we are. We've, we've, allocated, no, we've for, allocated two no, years for yeah, the first six, yeah. We've got verse plenty of time, John. Verse 16 <laughs> first. Yeah. I say then, walk in the Spirit. This is 5.16. Right. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, that walking is just walking with the Spirit, mm. walking with Him. And then go forward to verse 25. It says, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. That's a much more militaristic term, and it's actually talking about walking in step, lockstep, mm. the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it's uh, taking the same idea, but it's tightening it um, yeah. at the end. And, and, and listen... That's the that's, obedience that's, you're talking about. That's the idea. That's the obedience. Yes. Because if you're doing that, you can't possibly disobey. Yeah. And that, that's what the Lord wants. He doesn't want you to go around sacrificing yourself and beating yourself on the back and, 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 and fasting if it's something he hasn't called and all this sort of thing. He said, no. Because the context just was just with Saul, if I remember, it was, it was uh, Saul uh, and Samuel where Saul is saying, look at the sacrifices yeah. that I've brought. And then I think it was Samuel who said to obey mm. is better than yeah. sacrifice. And that's how we obey. It's not that we pick up the law and obey it. It is not that. Yeah. <laughs> I want to make that so clear. It is not that. Mm. It is obeying the leading of the Holy Spirit in you. And sometimes you'll get it wrong, but it doesn't matter. Practice it. Be determined. Pray without ceasing in the sense, say, Lord, please help me. Please help me. I want, to, I want to flow in the spirit and do what you Sorry, want. Sorry, I jump out of the no, passage all right. sometimes because I have relevant. Keith Green ringing no, in my it's, ears. It's all relevant <laughs> yeah. to living under I grace. So. I believe this so. is the, it. The difference is who's, who's the leader. Yeah. yeah. See, so under grace, we, Christ is the leader. And he leads us through his Holy Spirit and, and his word. And, and we obey the leader. Mm. And, and what happened in the garden and what happens in legalism is you become the leader. I am now calling the shots. Mm -hmm. I am, yes, making that sacrifice. I'm, mm -hmm. Rather than just obeying his leadership, mm -hmm. I am in charge. I might be doing things that I think will please him, but it's coming from me. Yeah. And, that, and that's the difference. Mm -hmm. It's the, the motivation. Mm. Praise yeah. the Lord. Thanks, thanks for this. It's, 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 I think it's, it's a blessing to, to folks watching. They're, 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 we're, we're digging going down to a sort of level of appreciation of yeah. living in the Spirit. And it's, it's blessing me anyway, yeah. which means that I've lost you, my place in the well, passage. What you, what you said actually is yeah. about, you know, we have to distinguish between spirit and soul. Yeah. That which is soulish. Yeah. You know, because you have to be careful. And, and Jesus said, 
it's the spirit that gives life, John 6, mm. 63, I think. It's the spirit that gives life, the flesh is of no avail. Mm. So again, these legalists were actually appealing to their flesh. Mm. To use the word again, they were, they were love bombing them, mm. zealously courting them, mm. but actually not for their good. They were doing it actually to, to win their hearts. Mm. And then he says, um, first of all, to exclude you from all others so they mm. can have them for yourself. Mm. And then he says that you may be zealous for them. In other words, you will give them all your money. Mm. You will give them all your devotion. In other words, they're doing it for a selfish motive. So it's almost, it, it is cultic. It is cult. I mean, this is it's it, a classic, yes, it is. Um, um, as it were, blueprint for yes. how to run a cult. It is. To, yes, exactly. And um, to use a human analogy. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go on, no, no, no. Go, it's all right. I just just well, a, brief a human point. analogy. No, in a minute. no, it's just uh, Paul yeah. is developing an, uh, an argument which was originally given by Jesus, which is be, be, beware the false prophets who come in mm. sheep's yeah. clothing. This is exactly That's what right. he's, he's he's talking about here. Yeah. Carry or, on. Or grooming is yes. the human example. Yeah, yeah, or, yeah. Say a man knows how to activate certain emotions in a woman. Or a so child. He's, he's not. Or a child. Or a child. Yep. And he, don't, he pretends that he loves them. And that, that's what they want to hear. But he's appealing to their, mm. to their soul. Uh, but he doesn't really. Because mm. he just wants what they can give him. Mm. Where, where, you know, mm. you're often on the sexual level. Mm. Uh, and so the, it's, uh, he's, he's saying, their motives are actually greedy. And then he says, he's can now comparing himself now, but it's good to be zealous in a good thing always. In other words, he's saying, I'm zealous for you. I That's love it, you. Exactly. You know, and it's a good thing. But they try and portray the fact, no, 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 that you're, he's not, you know, no. stick with us. So there is this exactly. divide, divisive approach. And, and that's what he's answering there, because I was struggling mm. earlier just to, I forgot what the meaning of this was. Yeah. And not only when I'm present with you. Mm. And what, he, what he's saying is, they have the advantage because they're right there on the scene. Mm. Paul is distant from them and, and they're kind of saying, look, Paul's not interested in you. Mm. Yeah, he came into town, he preached to you. He's moved on to other things. Mm. He couldn't care about you. Mm. You know what I mean? Uh, and they're saying, we're the ones that really love you. Do you know what's coming to my mind? Sorry to say, it is the whole education, state education system, which is sort of um, enticing kids away from mm. their parents. You know, and it, 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 I, it may be the pendulum is swinging back, I hope so, um, where they're, they're, they're trying to stop this indoctrination of kids, you know, of atheism and secularism into the kids' hearts. And, and don't listen to your Christian parents, you know, and trying to separate them. But it is through, we care for you, you know, there's love. You're, you know, uh, the uh, Christian position is hate-filled. and and. and I know it's happening. I've seen it even with, with my own kids at school. How how seductive this the the pull of grooming yeah. teachers, as it were, who who are grooming the kids to draw them away from a, a Christian mm. perspective, um, and uh, how it fits into law and grace. I don't know, but it is mm. there. There is there is a kind. It is a system of you follow. We are teaching the rights and wrongs. We, they're creating a framework where it is wrong to um, it is wrong to teach morals. It's well, wrong to you know well, teach you see, Christian it's a, it, values. It, it, it's a, so it's a new religion. It is, and it, but it's it, it's adopting the same model. It's perverting grace. It's teaching a perverted grace. In a sense, you can do what you like. Yeah, you do whatever's right for you. Yeah. Well. You know, that's perverting grace. Yeah. And at the same time, it's presenting Christianity as legalistic and demanding of you, which is not fair. Yeah. And, and, and anyway, look at the history in the Old Testament, that murdering God. Yeah. You know, so it's perverting. It's yeah. taking the same. It's just, it's, yeah. Satan is so predictable. He's taking the same model and just perverting it. He mm. couldn't invent it for himself. So he has mm. to use one that the Lord created. Mm. But you see and, that. And I do feel strongly, I mean, it is my uh, 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 sort of, uh, you know, keep getting back to that same old record, that I, I do think parents should absolutely be on, on the case with their kids in school and if need be, pull them out. Because you as a parent, you are responsible to nurture and protect your child in the Lord until they reach as it were, that position where they make a decision. And as we know, they can go away 
um, because there's rebellion in the heart of man or they can decide to follow the Lord. But I think as a parent, you should be protecting your kids because the stats are very bad mm. uh, for those parents um, and those families don't, that don't protect their kids from this grooming. Mm. But, yeah. um, but again, not to be Victorian legalists with their kids because they are, as it becomes a, um, no, it, 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 it reinforces the caricature of Christianity. Yes, of you can't give that the love ground away. Yeah. Because that's what Paul does and we need to do what Paul does. He doesn't, he actually comes back and says, I love you. Mm. And, yeah. and my love is the genuine love and God's love is the genuine yeah. love. What a battleground. You know what I mean? Eh? What so a battleground. You, it's not that we, we withdraw because they're using the, the love terminology that yeah. we should pull back. Because notice what he says here. He says, my little children. In other words, I love you mm. like a mother loves her children. Mm. Because he literally gave birth to them. You see, mm. he through the gospel, through, through his prayers and preaching the gospel, he gave birth to them. So he says, I love you mm. as a mother, even though I'm not, I'm not with you. I, I have that genuine love for you. Mm. He's contrasting himself now. And he says, they just want what they, you can give them. But mm. I, my love is an unselfish love. He says, for I labor in birth again until Christ is formed in you. Mm. So notice he, he says he's labored twice. He labored the first time when he gave birth to them through his prayers and through his, in fact, it's a picture of intercession, isn't it? To yep. travail in, and brought them to birth. Prayer. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. And now he says, I am interceding for you again. I am laboring again. I, I care for you that much. Yeah. And, and he is saying, my love, I love you and it's an unselfish love. Yeah. I just want Christ to be formed in you. Yeah. I don't want to possess you as my own disciple. That's right. I don't want I you want just you. to become Pauline. Exactly. Yeah. I want you to that's be right. a Christ follower. Yeah. yeah. And that see the nature of a cult again is mm. to make disciples unto yourself. That's right. Rather than to make them disciples of Christ. So he wants Christ to be formed in them. Yeah. yeah. Christ to possess them. Yeah. What a battleground, spiritual battleground in these verses. And nothing's changed. No. It's gone on through the centuries. Nothing's right changed, up to the but by day. the way, if it, he hadn't established this right at the outset of the church and the outset of his letters, he, he may not have even got to the other letters. Mm, no. You know, it would have been game over, wouldn't it? Right at the beginning, it would. It would have been still birth, yes. so to speak. Mm. Yes. But we can see from this that the ministry of intercession is very important. I'm sure many people listening are, you know our intercessors, and uh, that is something we can do whatever age we're at mm. and so forth. And it's an unselfish ministry. You mm. know, people don't necessarily know That's that you're right. doing it. Yeah. But notice he talks about la it's like labor. Mm. Sometimes, it, it, uh, as you ask the Holy Spirit to help you, the Holy Spirit intercedes with you and through you. Mm. And, and as you yield yourself to him, it, it can be, can be that intense, yeah. like labor, yeah. and, and we have to intercede for people to be born again and for Christ to be formed in them. So in other words, especially young Christians, we must pray for them that, that Christ be formed in them, yeah. you see. Yeah. So again, they're born again means that Christ is in them, Christ is in their spirit, but there is a formation of Christ, the life of mm -hmm. Christ in the soul as the love of God, as the grace of God um, begins to, that's spiritual growth, isn't it? As we, our soul becomes filled with the love, joy, peace of the Holy Spirit and Christ is formed in us. I mean, it's absolutely glorious, um, but Paul is really, he is not enjoying this, is he? It, there's a sort of sense that he, no. he's having to fight, but he knows deep down he would like, he uses the term change, I wish I could change my tone. Yes. But he can't because it's, he can't. Uh, it's a battleground that he's engaging in. I, I think he... He, he, he does eventually change his tone, but at this point it's like the, the, the heat of the battle. It, mm. is the, it is the heat of the battle and, and, and you know how a woman gives birth to a child and, and, and us chaps look on and realise that it's quite a painful process for the most part. It was for me when Simone started squeezing my hand. Yeah, I know. I've been, uh, I've you know, been on the with her nails. Hand. Yeah, it hurts. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't sort of so gentle it, holding. You know, the birth hand. is painful, yeah. but then bringing up children is painful as well. It doesn't right. just end. It's a different sort of pain. Yeah. It becomes emotional pain, and this is what. 
Paul is experiencing here, emotional, spiritual pain, mm. because he has a genuine love, and he knows that they're being led astray by the, by the, the flasher, you know. Mm. He, they're being led astray. Yeah. And, and, and the Pied Piper. And he's not there, he can't, he, he's got a right to them. And he doesn't know the frame of mind of all of them, so he's concerned that his tone, you know, might be misinterpreted, they yeah. might misread what he's trying to say, and put a wrong, and that, this concerns him. This, he wishes he was with them so he could, he could sense their mood and adopt the right it's, tone with them. Yeah, exactly. But, it, but it, it's... So he can be misrepresented. A, absolutely, but it's such a serious point mm. that without the aid of the Holy Spirit to deliver it, it would be very, very difficult. Because I feel that we, in one sense, in the PR battle, we're being misrepresented. And very it's much so. Fair. I mean, oh, we are. I, I don't have one absolute, I, I, a scintilla of hatred towards anyone, but I do hate the devil yeah. and his works. I do hate false ideologies. Yeah. I, I, I hate, I do really, there's yeah. a visceral hatred there. But of course, we've got to be very careful how we express it because we're going to be portrayed and stereotyped as, yes. as something really nasty. Yes. Now, it's tough, isn't it? Then Paul must be aware, because he's smart, he's a smart chap, so he's aware of how he can be misrepresented. Mm. How, how his earnest, you know, his zealotry could be turned the other way as, as you know, that he's... Well, he's he says later on, doesn't he? He says later God's on in this plan. chapter how, you know, the, the, the war between the flesh and the spirit is as much today as it was then. Yeah. That, um, mm. that, that he who is the son of the bondwoman will war constantly against he's mm. the son of the, uh, son of the spirit, son mm. of promise. So that situation exists. It's a spiritual reality. And, and we can't do anything about it apart from know it's there and pray. This is what Paul's doing, interceding. He's mm -hmm. pointing, at, pointing, it out, pointing out it's there, teaching them how to walk by the grace of God because it's the only way they're going to, they're going to be, be able to navigate their way through this. Mm. God, I think it, you know, it's, a, it's an old saying, but you know, God hates sin. You know. And, but he loves the sinner. That's it. And those two things have to That's be it. held together. Exactly. He hates the sin because it's destroying the sinner. Mm -hmm. and, and we see that on the cross. You know, he, he loves us so much that he went to the cross for us, but he hates sin so much that he had to even judge his own son who took our sin on the cross. So we, we have to hold those two things together to be in, in agreement with God. We, mm -hmm. we, we hate sin. Mm -hmm. uh, our own sin, as well as yeah. other, you know, sin mm. and falsehood, as you say. Mm. But we, we always love the sinner, and uh, if we're not careful, um, we, so we have to be careful in our language when we talk about that, as you said. Yeah. But I found there's an interesting, um, you know, in verse 20 that you were yep. alluding to. Yep. I would like to be present with you now and to change my tone. That's it. You know, I'd like to be able to relax and know that everything's exactly. all right. But for I've got doubts about you. Now that's a difficult phrase. I came across. I, apparently, this is the gist of what it means. Mm -hmm. I am at my wits' end to know how to reach you, and I like wow. that. I, I, that's right. I am. A, I, I don't. You know, I'm struggling to find. And of course, he was effective. And he puts but, it in writing. But, yeah. He's so honest, is Paul, isn't he? Yeah. But this is an anxious mother, if you like, yeah. about her children. Yeah. And I'm at my wits' end. I just like that, to know, yeah. how can yeah. I reach you? Yeah. You know, have I got through to you or not? I'd love to be there to, to, to see if, yeah. if, if, I'm, if, you're, if you're responding to, to what I'm saying. Mm. Mm. But I, it, it is the language of love. It's the language of deep concern. Yeah. I, I, just the last five, ten minutes of discussion reminds me of Isaiah 5, where it just says, Woe to those who call evil good, good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness. In other words, Paul is being portrayed as darkness. You know, the light and the truth that he's bringing is, you know, through this, this fog of, you know, a sort of love and care it is being portrayed as darkness. And it says, who put bitter for sweet, sweet for bitter. This is the challenge that Paul's facing. Mm. You know, he, he wants to, um, he is sweet, he wants to sound sweet, yeah, and he's struggling to yeah. get the message across. And, and woe to those who are, who are wise in their own eyes and clever in their own sight. It go, just goes on and on. And, and that is what we're facing, is how to, to project the truth mm. 
without, as it were, saying, oh, well, the, the end justifies the means. Let's, let's, um, let's use, you know, cunningly devised fables or let's, let's try another method. Paul just goes for it straight, doesn't he? He, he, he doesn't try to persuade be people he, with... He does because he, he, he understands what's at stake. Um, we'll get there in due course, mm. but he talks about falling from grace. Uh, um, and this is, this, is what, this is what he's... Uh, I know. Mm. Um, we, 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 I'm sure we'll discuss it when we get there. Is this the unforgivable sin? Is this the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. Uh, we'll talk about it, I'm not mm. going to, let's just drop some seeds yeah, in the future have. when we get there. Have. But the good thing this, is, John, but, Bible study is no longer interactive, <laughs> so you can get away with that one. Yeah, but because, it's, um, the point we'll I'm get a letter he in a few weeks talks about time. It, lest you fall yeah. from grace. Yeah. This is what he's trying, he realises that the outcome could be really, really serious. Yeah. And, 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 um, that's what he's trying to protect them from. Mm. This is why the, the passion he's feeling, because mm. it is literally a fight for life and death. Mm. Yes, of course, the Lord, the theology of the preservation of the saints is sound and Paul expounds it, but there's something here, I believe, that is really concerning him mm. very, very deeply. Mm. Okay, so we're in the sort of last third of this Bible study. I'll, I, have we got more that we can dig out of these uh, early verses? Um, I, I'm certainly reminded, as, as we've been discussing, of how, you know, Paul, and you sort of alluded to earlier in this passage, um, Derek, where Paul wants us to be, to clothe ourselves with Christ. Mm. You know, that's the root, isn't it? Um, uh, to us being all one in Christ, for us being in, in lockstep with the yeah. Spirit. You know, uh, basically it, being in fellowship with him, he's the head of the body, we're all holding fast to the head. That's how you create a, the, the church, Yeah, it is, is actually getting it in the right order rather than a legalistic order. Yes. Um, uh, it, so it, it, cannot, oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. I was sort of looking at John, so, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Uh, you know, it, it, it comes <clears throat> right back to what they're, right, we come right back to the beginning again, looking at this and what they're trying to destroy and what, to a large extent, they've been very successful at doing over the centuries. But um, it, it, it's, we all, we, we know, we say, we, I, I, I want the Lord's will in my life, you know, I want to do what's right. And, and, but how? But what they don't say is, but how do I do it? You know, it's a question each of us asks ourselves. Lord, how do I walk in with you? How do I obey you? Mm -hmm. And there's only one answer, and that, well, there are a couple of answers, only, but they're two parts of the same answer. Mm -hmm. The only answer is allow the Lord to live his life through you. Mm -hmm. He didn't save you so you could work for him. He saved you so that he could work through you. Mm -hmm. You know, greater is he than is in you, than is in the world. Mm -hmm. He wants to use you. He doesn't want to take your personality. He doesn't want to change your loves and desires, except where they're ungodly ones. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have a passion for watching cricket, that's fine. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to change all that, but he wants to use you to impact others, uh, to, to impact yourself, to impact others, and, and for his glory. And the only way you can do that is by yielding to him, and that is practice. You know, not legalistic practice, Practice in talking like you would to a teacher. Mm. Lord, I, I know this is what you want. Please teach me. You know, my mother taught me to walk. My father taught me to ride a bike. Now I need you, Lord, to teach me how to walk with so you. There's two, um, uh, two little passages that are so familiar, they're, they're staring us in the face. Uh, one is where the Lord said to Nicodemus, you know, who's a great yeah. teacher of the law, yeah. um, uh, uh, that um, flesh gives birth to flesh, spirit gives birth to spirit. You must be born again of the Spirit. Um, and then the other is obviously in, in Romans 8, where it says the law of the spirit of life sets us free from the law of sin and death. But I'm cutting across what Derek was about to say before, um, before I, I sort of turn to you, John. And Derek, you were going to say something and, and then I... Well, yeah, in I, different words to what yeah. John... It, it, Christianity is a love relationship with God, mm. with the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and really everything should flow out of that. Mm. You know, our obedience and everything flows out of love. Mm. And, you know, that's what Paul is really saying because grace is the manifestation of love. Mm. 
and the, and the Holy Spirit is the love of God, one way to describe the action of the Holy Spirit. He's the love of God flowing between the Father and the Son. And when we come into Christ, we come into that same flow of love, that same flow of life that's in the Trinity, mm-hmm. you know, and, and knowing God, Jesus said, knowing the Father and the Son is eternal life. Yeah. And, and so if we let um, that be the main thing, I would say, mm-hmm. is that love relationship with Christ. Because if all you're getting, say, in preaching or whatever is, do this principle, do this principle, it becomes about our performance. Mm-hmm. So the first focus is Christ. Yeah. Get a vision of Christ, get a revelation of Christ, and, and enter into that love relationship with God mm-hmm. through Christ. And then the grace of God will flow, and then you will want to do the right things yeah. because it comes out of that fountain of, of love. Yeah, I, um, very early on in my life, I met a dear brother, John Alderson, and he came to visit us down in Sussex. I don't know whether, John, you're watching this, but he, he's, he's, he's knocking on a few years now, but um, he asked me, you know, I was in the kitchen down in our home in Sussex, and he said, Tim, do you love the Lord? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it wasn't, are you born again? Are you a Christian? You know, and in, in other words, have you confessed your sins? And, you know, he, he said, do you love the Lord? Which is mm. fitting exactly with you. And that really got me thinking because it never occurred to me before, you know, as a kind of 11 year old, 12 year old kid, mm. um, you know, do I love the Lord? And, and the Lord said, you know, so you've got the whole of the, of, of the Ten Commandments, but the Lord said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and strength, which mm. sort of sorts out everything else in terms of relationships and with your neighbour. Love creates love. Yeah. So when we receive the love of God, we receive yeah. the grace of God, that, that produces love in our hearts mm. Mm. for God. Mm. And we find ourselves wanting to please God. We yeah. want to obey God. Yeah because it comes from, from that love. Mm. And that's what Paul is saying. You don't have to be scared about living by grace. It doesn't mean you're gonna, it's going to cause you to go into sin, because actually it means you're coming under the, the love of God, mm. and that will cause you to live a lovely life. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, yeah. so it doesn't encourage sin. Mm. Um, you shouldn't need the law to protect you from sin, yeah. because if, you, if you're connected to grace, yeah. That's the power to live free from sin. Mm. This is good. Yeah. John, you're, you're in a reflective mood. Yeah, I do. Um, I'm, I'm it's reflect- so lovely to, on, on, to on, yeah. I'm, I'm so overwhelmed, and this has to be a work of the Lord because it's yeah. not something I could... I'm so overwhelmed by this message of grace. Mm. I, I, I want with all my heart mm. to the church to grasp it. Mm. It, it, it is utterly liberating and and without understanding grace i venture to say you you will never really love the lord yeah Uh, it'll be something you declare you do but unless you understand grace you won't really love Mm -hmm. it because it's that that revel and it can only come by revelation yeah and the lord will give it to you if you ask that was my point i was going to come on to because we um we're here Obviously, we, we, it's Bible study. We're going through the scriptures and tr- trying to honestly um, present what Paul is, has written. But there are a, a sort of internecine type political battles in the church. Um, to what extent should we be engaging in the fight to present this? I was more than any not. other. More than, should more we than... fight? Should if we really believe that yes. it's a work of God's grace? Should we just? No, well, it, you, you don't we be, be fighting for it. No, because you're, you're, you're in danger of falling back on a work I know you're flesh. a military man. No, so. you, I am, yeah. but you're in danger of falling back in the flesh. It's not that the campaign is wrong. It's just it might not have been called by God in the way that you are ex, you know, mm. executing it. It has to come down again to being obedient to the Lord. There, mm. there is no alternative. The moment we start to form our own plans, and I'm not saying the plans are necessary not of God, Mm. But we need to check that out because once you're submitted and yielded to God, the Holy Spirit will begin to direct your thoughts. 
Thus, you have the mind of Christ because you're allowing him to influence your thoughts. Mm. Um, and uh, it, that may be a conscious or indeed a subconscious process. It's yeah. probably, uh, times yeah. will be one or the other. But so you will just move in, in the spirit. But if we just sit down because we feel so passionate about this, which we do, and say, right, let's form a, let's form a, a campaign That's and, it. and off we go, then it could very well be a work of go, the flesh, which will, which will go, be Actually, dramatic. you fall into Absolutely. line with that. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I think you say, for instance, someone sitting in a church, obviously it wouldn't be Derek's church, but they're, you know, and they're hearing things that are, that are clearly not, not right. The Lord said, um, you know, you can do nothing against the truth, only for the truth. I, I, I sometimes think that, yeah, the, the enemy would want us to, to engage in, in denouncing in the wrong way, something yes. that's wrong. And yet our whole message is, it's all of grace, yeah. you know, and God's work. So we do what, Derek? You know, if, if someone is, um, uh, how do, it's easy for you, as it were, because you are there teaching uh, from the front, mm. but say, put, it, put yourself in another position where you are in the congregation, and what is probably the most prevalent position is, is more legalistic. How would you address that as someone? Well, there well, is a Many balance. of our viewers might there be in that balance. position. It does yeah. say that Jesus was full of grace and truth. Yeah. And, and that you can go wrong on both sides of that, in, mm. in the sense that, you know, the grace and the truth needs to go together. So if, if I think you're saying mm. if there is preaching from the pulpit yeah. that is clearly against, mm. that is unbiblical, yeah. you know, then, then you, ha you have to, then it isn't necessarily wrong for you to challenge that. Mm. But you've got, got to do it the right way. You've Guard got your to do heart it. with all diligence. You uphold yeah. the truth, but in a gracious way. I think that's what you're yeah, saying. That's right. So, yeah, you wouldn't necessarily stand up in the middle of the yeah. sermon and, yeah. you know. Um, but you, you might seek to have an interview with a pastor mm. and, and, and yeah. do that. And it may be that if it's serious enough, if it contradicts the gospel, and mm. for me, the red line is the gospel. Yeah. Mm. You know, but I have people that contact me and say, what do I do? Because what my church believes about Israel, you know, is, mm. you know and I say, well, look, you, 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 you have to pray, really. You can't expect the church to be perfect. No. But for me, and, and this, there's a sense in which if legalism is being preached, mm. that is contradictory to the gospel. Mm. Uh, if I can't change that, you know, I, I might have to leave that church. Mm. But um, certainly we should be gracious in the way, firm, yeah. but, but gracious in the way we deal with it. Mm. And because if we react in, the, if for instance, we, we make a show of ourselves and, uh, you know, create a public embarrassment, yeah. we probably haven't done our message any favors. No. You know what I mean? So, but, but we're talking about grace, but grace and truth go together. Yeah. Jesus was full of grace and truth. So it, How is being it? gracious doesn't mean we just, yeah. you know, no, not at all. <laughs> tolerate yeah. you know, right. and no, say exactly. everything's no, that's fine. That's the misrepresentation. You know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How is it that um, evangelicalism, which really, you know, its roots are in loving and respecting um, and honouring uh, God's word, you know, faithfully, ha has allowed it's itself to, in certain quarters to become legalistic. So it, it, it has happened, hasn't it? it yes. it's, it's quite common, you know, a, a judgmental legalism yeah. is, is definitely quite strong within certain it's from evangelical Because it's circles. rooted in the flesh, and the flesh, is, the flesh is a powerful and very real enemy. Um, and, and, and unless we understand that and are constantly constantly checking ourselves out with the Holy Spirit and the Word of the Lord on this, it'll happen. You can guarantee that laws will be created, rules will be created, standards will be created, and if you fall short of them, that's it. By those whose sort of, you know, whole raison yes. d'etre is, yes. you know, to eschew yes. legalism. Yes, it you know, is. And, you know, structures and, and but it religion, can happen. It can and happen they, for a, they create a, another They make religion. themselves, they, some, I'm not yeah, I know. That some people in, who are doing these things, they make themselves vulnerable because mm. they get a bit pleased with the, their success rate or whatever. Mm. And the moment they're stepping into any form of pride, they're, they're what scripture calls quenching the spirit. The spirit hasn't gone, he's still there, but they're quenching him. They're putting their own feelings, their own sense of achievement over and above his desire. Mm. 
and, and that effectively quenches the Holy Spirit. And so um, I've forgotten what the question was. So there um, we are. So have I, by the way. <laughs> well, well, the, <laughs> the Jews did, We're in I the mean, last minute. So. The Jew, well, you, yep. they put a fence around the law. You know, that's yep. the whole thing. Yep. So in other words, what happens in a church or whatever is that something bad happens, all right? Mm. So how can we make sure this bad thing doesn't happen again? Mm. We make a law and we put a fence around the law. In other, and then before you know, you collect all kinds of rules and regulations and laws that, to prevent bad things happen, yeah. and, and gradually you lose your freedom. Thank you so much. Um, we've scraped through. Uh, sorry for all of my sort of extraneous verses I throw in, but um, one that, another one to finish with is that he chose the lowly things of this world in Corinthians so that no one can boast before him. And I think legalism, you know, does leave that room for boasting, um, which we should never be doing. Just be thankful for God's grace. And we'll see you next week, chapter four. <laughs>